This time on Finnegan's Garage, lots of fun stuff happening. It's freezing in Georgia, and yet I'm burning my leg hair off in the ramp truck because of the giant hole in the floor. But we're going to fix that right now. And we're also going to give you some tips on how to bend sheet metal, and we're going to reveal who won the Miller Multimatic 220 ACDC welder. The OG Ram Truck has been with me several years now. If you guys watch Roadkill, then you know we bought this thing out of San Diego, California, and it had a 454 V8 and turbo 400 three-speed automatic transmission. It was a fun truck, but it never got good mileage. It never went very fast, and it barely did burnouts. In fact, this thing ran a 19 second quarter mile time at just 69 miles an hour. Obviously, we can't have that. So I hooked up with the guys from Power Driven Diesel, and we swapped out the Turbo 400 and 454 for a 6BT Cummins 12 valve diesel engine and a 47RH four speed lockup converter automatic transmission. It's an awesome package in stock form. Obviously we couldn't leave it alone. So compound turbos, check this out. I've already made some episodes about this thing. If you haven't watched them, I'll give you the lowdown here. That's a 12 valve Cummins, awesome motor in stock form. We didn't leave it stock. We took the head off, O-ring the block, replaced the head gasket, added compound Borg Warner turbos, swapped the stock cooling system and intercooler out of a 1997 Dodge Ram into the nose of my square body Chevy. Doing so meant pushing the motor back, all right? Pushing the motor back meant cutting a massive hole in the firewall and in the floorboards for that transmission and today on Finnegan's Garage, we're gonna show you some of the moves we use to actually fix those two holes in the floor. The ramp truck is almost 100% back together, except for the big gaping hole in the floor and the firewall. You can see we're already making cardboard templates slash hole fillers because the heat out of this is unbelievably bad. There's our power driven diesel built 47RH trans. There's our big hole. Today's goal, fix the hole, fix the leaks, stop the hair on my legs from catching on fire. Here's a fun fact. Back in the 30s and 40s before television, when we just listened to radios and kind of stared at a box in our living rooms, Foley artists use sheet metal like this to make thunder noises. Check it out. <laughs> Spooky, right? Totally works. I'm gonna take this piece of sheet metal, this is 20 gauge, and I'm gonna bend it into the first piece of our new firewall cover. I'm gonna start at the top and work my way down. Okay. I wanna bend that and that. Those will be the sides of our new panel for our firewall. I also wanna bend this. I want it to bend it that way so there's a flange that I can weld to. So, problem is, is if I bend this, it's gonna bend this. I don't want that to happen, so I need to make a cut here. And there are awesome corner notching tools out there to do the job, but uh, I'm just gonna throw out the bandsaw and cut a little slit right here so that I can bend this and then bend this that direction and then bend this this direction. Ready to bend. This is our piece. This is Midler Brothers 48 inch ultimate box and pan brake. Awesome tool. And what makes this thing cool versus a traditional just regular old sheet metal brake that you use for like AC ducting or you know something like that is it has fingers you can remove both up top and on the bottom. And that allows you to not only bend a long straight line like this, but also turn the piece around, remove some of these fingers, and bend just this section. So check this out. We're going to drop it down, right on the line there. There's two handles, one on each side. I'm going to bend that. There. 
All right, so she's clamped down. Now we're gonna bend this, and we're gonna go a little bit past 90 degrees because it's gonna spring back. And if I had thought ahead of time, I would have grabbed my magnetic digital angle finder and put it on the metal, because then it would have told me exactly where 90 was, but we're gonna ballpark this because it doesn't have to be exact for what we're doing. So that side is bent up, right? Now we'll bend up this side. And now the fun part. So here's where a box and pan brake really shines. All of these fingers are removable, right? We talked about that. And if I wanted to bend this this direction, I would take out some of these fingers, okay? To leave an air gap on each side of the area I wanna bend. And that's so that the sides don't run into the fingers. But I want this bent the opposite direction. So what I'm gonna do is remove some of the fingers from the bottom and then flip this upside down and bend it. And that's going to bend this flange this direction so that I can tag that into the firewall. So what we're going to do is we're going to remove, let's see, we're going to use a 12 inch and probably a 2 inch. So I'm going to take out the 6 inch and it just clamps on. Right. Just like that. And you don't have to unthread it all the way, I screwed that up, but normally you would just unthread the half inch bolt and then slide the thing up. Then I'm going to slide this 12 inch piece over, just a hair, just enough so that I can get the side of this wheel to slide past, okay? 12 inches isn't wide enough, so we're going to add, looks like a 2 inch to it. So this one I'll take off completely. here next to the 12 make sure they are level with each other okay and then put this in upside down see how it fits just like that now lower down that piece And then all we do is bend it. Now we're not going to go all the way 90 because this part of the firewall isn't 90 to our piece. I'm going to ballpark it right there and we'll go back a couple times and test fit it until we get it right. There we go. You don't always have to open up both clamps on this machine to get the piece of material out. You can just undo one side and it'll tilt it up enough to do it. But there's our, there's our piece, right? This will go up and meet the top part of the firewall right under the cowl. This will meet the vertical part of the firewall. We're going to contour this to fit the shape of it. We're going to leave as small a gap as possible and we'll either weld or seam seal that. This is the part that's going to come right down to meet the next piece we're going to build for our transmission tunnel. And ultimately, this may prevent us from having a factory style air conditioning system in the truck ever again. But what it does do is it gives us enough room behind the engine to pluck it out. The engine has to tilt back a great deal to get out of this truck. The reason we notched the firewall so far was so that we could get the engine out of the truck without removing the cap. All right. Yeah, the only downside to this though is it sticks so far out that the odds of ever getting factory AC stuff back in here are pretty much shot. That's true. But you also... we'll figure something out for that. This will just cover the hole in the floor later on. Let's build an awesome console. Oh, but it's getting good. Almost there. It's getting good. A little more, a little more bend than I think it will be there. Almost, but not quite. The bend needs to be further back. So to shear the side, like about right here, and, and then put a bend. Yep, two bends and we're there. That's pretty good. Yeah, tech screw.
screw it. And we'll make a template, make a patch for the side. And we can tack weld this whole thing in and seam seal it. Here's a tip. Use a sheet metal screw to hold parts in place before you weld them while you're still in the mock-up stage. And if you can't get your welding ground clamp attached to a piece of sheet metal, these magnetic clamps from Stronghand Tools are a really good option. In fact, this one is designed specifically to attach your ground to. Here's our template. This is all that's left to complete the transmission tunnel. We're going to build it out of 20 gauge steel here. And you can see I've already transferred the template to the steel using a Sharpie marker. Now we're going to come over here. This is a Mittler Brothers stomp shear. This is the 52 inch model, uh, which is perfect for four by eight sheets of material. This thing will easily cut through 12 gauge aluminum, 16 gauge steel, and even 24 gauge stainless steel if you need to. It's simple to operate. What we're gonna do is line up our mark with the edge of the table right there. Right there. And place our foot on the bar. She goes. And then for these more complex curves here, you can either do these by hand with a set of tin snips or use the bandsaw like I'm going to use. Here's our last filler plate. This will get MIG welded right into place. And then We'll go over this whole thing, a couple of different materials to get rid of the heat and the noise. You can see these screws right here. We've already painted the backside of this part and applied the material to it. This is a reflective material. This will keep the heat coming through the top of this. We'll do the same over the top of it. And, uh, with any luck, we won't be melting our shoes this summer we're cruising across America. Right now we're welding sheet metal and lately I've been TIG welding and MIG welding a bunch of sheet metal in the garage using my new favorite welder, the Multimatic 220 ACDC. One of the reasons for that is it's incredibly easy to set up. Both of your bottles can stay on the cart plugged into the welder at all times. Your TIG torch, your MIG gun, they all stay plugged in the whole time so you just grab something, whatever you need, go to work. You don't spend a lot of time setting it up. You also don't spend a lot of time figuring out how to reconfigure the welder if you have 120 or 240 input voltage. This adapter is for a 120 socket. This adapter is for a 240. To go from one to the other, all you do is line up the arrows, thread it on there, and as you'll see here on the front panel, I've already got the machine turned on. Watch what happens when I plug it in. It's gonna tell exactly how much voltage it has coming into it. You don't have to do anything inside. I'm not moving a ground wire or a positive cable, I'm not doing any of that. If I switch back to 110, it knows it, it reconfigures itself. It's just that easy. Then it's all a matter of choosing what process you're gonna do Right now we're already set up for MIG Steel C25. That's because we have a 75%, 25% argon CO2 mix. Over here, if you engage auto set, this button chooses how thick your material is. And if you notice, right now it's 16 gauge. If I go down to 18 gauge, it adjusts the wire speed and the voltage. It also does that if you're TIG welding. This will adjust the voltage and the amp output based on your material thickness. That's a really simple way to make a good weld if you have very little experience or you're in a hurry. You more experienced guys, if you wanna tweak the settings, you can. There's a knob there, there's a knob there. You can adjust your voltage and your wire speed to your individual liking. Um, it's a fantastic unit and it's gonna make quick work of our transmission tunnel right now.
Are you high? Yes. <laughs> that doesn't seem safe. Note the liberal use of plastic to protect our broke-ass interior. Here we go. We're rocking the space heater right now because it's December in Georgia and it's a little chilly. We want this to hurry up and cure so we can seam seal it and then throw down our carpet. Right now what we're doing is scuffing the seams of everything that we welded and painted. And the reason we're doing that is we're going to seal the seams using a flexible seam sealer. Comes in a tube. Uh, the stuff we're using today, we got from, I think it was an AutoZone auto parts store. This is Dynatron and comes in gray. You can get this stuff in different materials, different colors. What you wanna be careful of is read the label because some of these are no good for the inside of your car. They basically have an odor after you're done that you really don't want in here. It doesn't give you that new car smell. Uh, this stuff here is pretty rad. It doesn't reek and you can paint right over it and it doesn't sag. You can go vertical with it. You can go horizontal on a wall and it doesn't fall down. Stuff is really good. So we're gonna scuff this real quick and then we're gonna seam seal everything we did because if you notice, we tack welded our tunnel in. We didn't spend the hours it would have taken to weld an entire bead on this. So this will make it watertight, keep the moisture out and finish the job before we go add our thermal barrier and our sound protection and our carpet. Oh, we're getting so close to the end right now. It's time to install the insulation. We got all of these products from wirecare.com company's awesome. They have everything you need to wire, plumb, and sound deaden, and insulate your hot rod. What are we going to use today? This is the quiet sheet exterior. This is actually the stuff that I put on the bottom side of the tunnel. It comes in two foot by two foot sheets, and you just cut it down to length, whatever you need. Just, this is what I bolted here on the bottom side of this. Okay. All and right. then the quiet sheet plus is the interior. You can see it's really thick. It should definitely help with the heat and noise reduction. Okay. And we're putting it on the firewall. We're going to glue it with just some Loctite spray adhesive. Okay. And who makes this stuff? This comes from DCI Performance Products. Shears work pretty good on this stuff, doesn't it? Yeah. It's like aluminum foil, but it's got pinholes in it. Nice. It's very flexible. I tried, I tried a razor blade, but it didn't work very well. So... Now we had to split the carpet in half because we raised the trans tunnel. So we'll address that later. But for now, we're going to toss both seats in it and go for a ride and see how much quieter and more comfortable the OG ramp truck can be. This is a big moment. How quiet is it? It's quieter. Yeah, it is. It's definitely quieter. Rear end is kind of making a funny noise. What that's all about. not happy. The rear end's not happy. No, it's not. Maybe it didn't like oh, this is huge. 1,200 foot pounds of torque. It's so quiet. It's very quiet. Is our gas, are we out of gas or is our gas gauge dead? That's below me. That ain't right. Hold on. Bet our voltage is dead. All our gauges are dead. Where are all our gauges go? Hold please. Must change fuse. These doors need fixing next. <laughs> Cross your fingers. 
Yeah, I don't think it's making through any more burnouts. is windows up, right? On a stone track. <laughs> I just want to test track it. moment time to give away the Miller Welders Multimatic 220 to one lucky Finnegan's Garage fan. A lot of comments, over 4,000 of you took the time to tell me your stories and I appreciate it and I want to thank Miller Welders for giving us all the opportunity to enjoy this machine. It enables me to make great content for you guys and hopefully you're the one taking this home. If your name is James Burb Q. That's his screen name anyway. This is the story he told me. I'm a 71 year old disabled Vietnam vet reworking my 81 C10. Nice truck. It was in the mid 11s and I want into the 10s. Our 34 year old son recently moved back near us and has been helping me lately. He has told me that he would like me to teach him how to weld and I would love to do so. When I was 15 my dad sent me to Oklahoma to spend a year with my grandfather so he could teach me to weld. Grandpa spent his whole life welding oil and natural gas pipelines in Texas and Oklahoma and was an excellent teacher. Like I said, I would like to teach my son to weld and if it happened to win the Multimatic 220 ACDC machine, I would use it to teach him what I know. Then I would give it to him as a graduation present. He's a good guy and his mother and I are both proud of him. Thank you, Mike, for your videos, as sometimes they inspire me to get out in the garage and get back to work. I think what he meant by graduation was not obviously college or high school. He put it in quotation marks. I think what he meant was that his son would graduate from his welding class, which is awesome. Um, passing on the knowledge, man, that's important to me. So, yes, James Burb Q, send me a message. Send me an email to finneganspeedandmarine at gmail.com. You have won yourself this brand new 56 pound inverter machine. It's portable. It'll weld anything you need in the garage. I love it, and I think you'll love it too. For the rest of you, thank you for watching. I appreciate it. I'll be back real soon with another video. Your burnout did that, not mine. Oh, definitely. Had to have been. Your burnout killed the clutch in my wife's El Camino. It's dead. What? Yeah, it's completely dead. You take off from a stoplight, you better not give it any RPM. We know what it is. We didn't break it in at all. We? I know what you did. <laughs> Killed the clutch of my wife's car. It's not my fault.